Um, greetings. Uh, I'm from the Klitsch Dene people of the Northwest Territories. Um, my traditional land is between Great Slave Lake and Great Bear Lake. Um, Hori is my traditional name, and it means spruce bow. Um, I'd like to recognize that we're on unceded Coast Salish territory, the land of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Salish people. And to extend a thank you to them and their ancestors for hosting us so graciously on that land. Masicho. So, Sabah and Ridiculous. Right now, Vancouver is claiming itself to be a city of reconciliation. This is a, an extremely powerful message. But imagine if our city was already reconciled. What would it look like? It would look like traditional knowledge was already incorporated into everything. <coughs> Our buildings would respect the land and nature. This is the building that's met the Living Building Challenge, the first building in New Zealand that's met the Living Building Challenge, really the highest level of sustainability. And it meets all kinds of cultural um, instigators. And it's a Maori building. It's this building is lead platinum. It's a home for um, its tribal housing. You can see the heat with my voice. And, uh, and it respects land, nature, and water. Honoring our ancestors. Our ancestors are so important to us as First Nations people. If we were already reconciled, all our buildings, all of our places, or honor our ancestors. We would have public art that reflects our culture on our buildings, but not just public art, but it would be part of all of the interior spaces in our, in our buildings, in the built environment. Our signs wouldn't just be in English, <clears throat> but they would also um, be in our First Nations language. Our buildings would respect our culture. This is a building by Douglas Cardinal. It's designed to step into the landscape, to come from the landscape, and to be a strong reflection of the green people. A part of, <coughs> excuse me, all First Nations communities <coughs> in Canada is the concept of community. And that's what we do in urban design, is we make places, and we always talk about community building. If our, if our cities were already reconciled, it would just be a natural part of everything that we do. This project in New Zealand has productive landscapes, and it has safe places for children to play, it has places for people <coughs> in the community to meet, to have barbecues, um, and it's a walkable city, it's a healthy living place. Our buildings will honor our families because family is really important to First Nations people. This is a daycare in, um, in Winnipeg, and this is the space where all the children sleep every day. And it's also the place where all the grandparents come and share their knowledge with children. We would have really amazing play spaces for our children that reflect our First Nations culture, and, and, and it wouldn't be a stock of play equipment all from the same company, but it would respond to the land, and it would allow children to explore in amazing ways. We would cherish our children by offering housing that's really about the children and uh, this is a, a very inspiring project, actually here in Vancouver. It's designed by Dr. Patrick Stewart, a local First Nations architect. And uh, this uh, foster children family housing has children at the heart of the development. Children um, in care have their own apartment, and the caregivers are the ones who come and go. The children always get to stay in their own home. So every night they get to sleep in their own bed. How do we get there? How do we get to a reconciled city? 
design guidelines. We would have architectural practices that use First Nations values at the root, as part of the root of their architectural practice. So this is um, a, a young Maori architect in Auckland who is doing amazing work. Um, and, and he uses his own culture um, to set the stage for how he practices architecture. But we would also have guidelines within our city that develop hmm, ways of doing work in the city for everyone. And it would be design guidelines based on the First Nations culture in the cities in Canada. So these are the Auckland design guidelines that are based on Maori cultural values. And they have design principles that they use um, to set up the values. And then they also have principles set out um, as part of their values. And uh, if you're interested, you can go on to the Auckland um, Design Guidelines website and they have a number of interesting case studies on where you can learn about more, more about how these values are used and, um, and how, they, um, how they can um, be shown in the built environment. So how do we, how do we get there? We look to the future. Um, we have a lot of discussion going on around reconciliation, and a lot of it is reconciling trauma of the past, but you can't um, reconcile that trauma without looking forward to the future. And while you're doing that, it's always about honoring our ancestors um, and, and looking to the past. So you don't just move forward blindly, 